Hey guys, Jacob Scott, Lawrence product expert. Today we're out here on the water. We're going to talk about the new active imaging transducer and the amazing images that it gives you when you're using the Lawrence HDS Live unit, the HDS Carbon unit, and the Elite TI2 units. Don't forget, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Lawrence YouTube channel so you can get this and other technical tips. Some of you may be asking, what is active imaging? Well, it's our new scanning sonar technology. We use it on our side scan and down scan. It gives us amazing range and clarity in the 800 kilohertz range. So it extends that range out, your 800 kilohertz to 150 feet each side of the boat. So that gives you a total of 300 feet of water that you can cover with this one transducer. The clarity is bar none. It is crisp, it is clean. It's amazing what you can see with it. We're going to drive over an area. Uh, there's a lot of rubble rock and stuff in this area, and you can actually pick out individual rocks and cracks in boulders and stuff like that. It's totally amazing. One of the great things about the new active imaging is the new user interface that we're using on the Lawrence HDS Live, and it's trickled down to our carbons and stuff like that. So previously, if you wanted to use side scan or down scan, you had to select this, the structure scan icon, and then you had to choose your views. Well, now we put We've broken out all of our views. They're here on the home screen. So if you want side scan, you just select side scan and there it is. So as you can see, we're looking at one side of the screen. Now we're gonna look at the left and the right side. We're looking out 150 feet. So if you can look right here on the right hand side of this screen, we're looking away from the boat and look at these cracks and stuff that are in this rock and this hard surface that's over there. Now, when you look to the left side of the boat on the screen here, you can see that rubble rock that's up there, up against the bank where it's fallen into the water and it's working its way out. But we've got a really hard bottom here all the way around. And it's really amazing. I mean, you look in here, you can see these individual rocks in this rock pile. You could pick them out if you wanted to. So that's one of the amazing things we're talking about, of the clarity of the active imaging transducer. And again, this is in 800 kilohertz and we're looking 150 feet to each side of the boat. So that's some amazing range. As we get in here, you can actually start to see, you can see we've got some lay downs that are in here. Um, there's some shadows being cast over here. We've got some really big fish. If you see this right here, that's the shadow of a really big fish that's up in the water column and that shadow is projected down on the rocks below it. So this is really cool. Look at this tree right out here. You can see this tree, you can see the branches, you can see where it's laid out on that rocky surface and the way it just shows up differently than the rock bottom does. But I mean, look at all this boulders and this rubble rock that's out here. You know, we're looking, we're seeing it at 100 plus uh, feet to the side of the boat on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we're right about 100 feet from the bank and you can see that bank line as it shows up as a nice solid image right here. I mean, you can just look at the size of these boulders that are in the water that we're picking up. We're picking up big boulders, we're picking up small boulders. It's all showing up. Look at the cracks over here in this rock. You can differentiate. You can see some of those rocks are sitting up a little bit taller than the others, the way they sit on the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the menu. You can see we're in 800 uh, kilohertz. Um, our contrast is on auto. We're gonna talk about color palettes for a minute. The color palette, it's really whatever you want to choose. Here's palette number two. Um, it's kind of a, uh, a negative look, or not quite a negative look, but it gives you that white, white and black differentiation. You can see these fish that are really popping over here. You can see this one right here and this one right here, which is really amazing. You can also see the difference in the rocks and the boulders here. So color palettes is really, don't let somebody tell you you have to use a specific color palette. Use what looks best to you. My personal preference, I use this number one palette a lot. I also like this number two. Again, these are great daytime viewability palettes where it just pops off the screen. So we're gonna go ahead and back to number one. Now we're gonna talk about the contrast. Nine times out of 10, I leave mine in auto. But think of contrast as, as the power you're adding out there. If I turn my contrast up, you can see I put more energy into the water and I can wash stuff out if I want to. Or I can drop the power on it it doesn't reflect as much and I can make it as dark as I want to make it. So again, like I said, auto is a really good setting that works for 99% of the people, 99% of the time. Now, as you can see, we're showing 
we've got some bait fish and stuff that are all, all over in here. There's also some uh, some white bass and stuff that are in here that are working these bait balls. Uh, this area we come to quite a bit. It has a lot of fish in it. It has a lot of diversity of wildlife in it. Um, it is a river system, so we get a lot of trees and stuff that that flow down through here that get hung up in these rocks and stuff. So the, the one really neat thing about it is it's always changing. But with my active imaging transducer, especially on side scan, I can come through here and I can see the changes that have been made since the last time the water came up or went down or if we've had a flood or anything like that. I can see those changes on my screen and that lets me know how I want to fish it. So a lot of people interpreting a side scan image is where they have the most issue. And it's actually really quite simple when, once you look at it. This center line right here, that's the very top of the water column and that's where our boat is. And then from that center line where it's dark in here all the way to where it gets bright, that's the water column. So if this is the water column, we're basically just taking everything and we're flattening it out like that so that we can look at that. But as you can see, we can see these fish in the water column. And based on our scale down here, from 0, 50, 100, I can kind of look at that and interpret and uh, say that I'm in about 25 feet of water. And you can see we've also got these fish that we're marking in here. These are big fish. They're called a spoonbill or a paddlefish. They're really big fish. Um, they're in here all the time. And, you know, looking at these fish, I can say that one's in probably about 10 to 15 feet of water. So that's really great because we have the scales that allow you to look at this stuff and interpret it. Okay guys, another thing that's really, really cool about this active imaging on the side scan is with this clarity, we can see things way out to the side of the boat. And if I see like this, this is, looks like a lay down right here to me. So if I wanted to mark that lay down because I know I want to come back and fish it, I can put my crosshairs on it and then I can hit my waypoint key and I can hit save. And as you can see, that waypoint shows up on my screen. So I hit clear cursor so it continues scrolling. So now if I come back through here, I can hit my pages button and if I look at my chart, there's that waypoint that I just put on the screen. So let's go ahead and go back here and look at our side scan. I saw something really cool. Now if you look in here, again I've spent a lot of time looking at this so I pick it up a lot quicker than people that are just now starting to use side scan. But you can see how this looks like it kind of curves up. So that means we've got a bowl kind of shape right here. We've got a bowl shape here that's kind of curving up and it curves up into the bank line over there. You've got a lot of boulders in here, a lot of riprap, but you've also got a little, where it's darker in here a little bit, you've got kind of a softer bottom. So typically that lets me know that that's probably something that's more of a muddy, sandy type bottom. So the easy thing to tr remember on this is the, the brighter the reflection, the harder that surface is that the sonar is reflecting back from. If you look over here on the right side of the screen, this is really, really cool. You can see we have the hard bottom. You can see like some of the cracks and stuff in here. And then you can see it kind of gets really soft over here on the edges. It kind of gets a little darker and muted. And what that is, is that's a muddy bottom. That's basically where the river channel is over there. So it's got that nice muddy bottom from the silt and everything that flows down the river in it. But I mean, it's just awesome that you can pick out that line between the hard bottom and the soft silty bottom on this unit. Okay guys, look at this tree over here. You can see this is a tree that's on the bottom over there. And most of what we're seeing is the shadow of the tree, that really nice dark spot of it. So here's the thing to think about on this. You know, people are like, well, how high up is that sticking? If you think about it in the terms of trees and telephone poles and stuff at nighttime, if you take a flashlight and shine it on them, the higher up that light shines on that pole, the farther out that shadow goes. So you can kind of get an idea of how far, how high up off the bottom that is by the length of the shadow. The longer the shadow, the higher up off the bottom it is. When we're talking about the shadows, and this really proves it right here, you see these shadows right here on the side? These are some big fish that are out here, and that's their shadow where it's shining on the water column. My guess is it's going to be these guys that are kind of right over here. You see a little bit wider, a lighter spot a little bit brighter. That's the fish and you can see how far it is up off the bottom so that cast that shadow out there a little ways from it and that's just really amazing when you look at it. It's really cool to look at and see. 
so one thing that tells you when you're looking at that shadow you can see that shadow and a lot of times you're also going to see the fish you can see they kind of gives you an idea how high up off the bottom so if if my shadow is really close to my fish like that then that fish is really close to the bottom but when you get that separation and like your fish is up here and the shadows down here that really starts telling you you know that fish may be anywhere from 5 to 15 feet off the bottom depending on how far he is from the shadow and how deep the water you're in so right now we're in 26 feet of water so when you get those shadows like that that's probably that fish is going to be a good at least five feet off the bottom like I was talking about fish and shadows and being up off the bottom we're just kind of drifting with the flow of the river right now see this fish right here he's kind of hanging out underneath our transducer we can see where he is in the water column here that he's typically I would guess I would say he's at about 15 feet deep but look at his shadow and you're like how do I know that's his shadow if you look how it kind of sweeps and comes up and everything else like that the shadow follows that exact same so that's how we're talking about looking at these shadows of the fish that you see and getting an idea of, of just where they are but this also shows you how big this fish is I mean what he's showing in the water column his return isn't that big but when you look at that shadow that shadow just sh shows you this is not a small fish it's making a really good sized shadow on the side scan that's a little bit on how your active imaging side scan transducer works. Again, it's amazing the clarity you get and it's amazing the range you get out of this transducer. I love this transducer. I use it all the time. So don't forget, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Lawrence YouTube channel so you can get other technical videos like this.